So, let us now move on to uh, discussion of uh, flow of steam through nozzles. Okay. Now, De Laval in 1888 actually used a convergent diversion nozzle to accelerate steam to high speeds for use in impulse steam turbines. Impulse, impulse steam turbines typically use high velocity steam at the inlet. So, he used a, um, a converging diverging nozzle in 1888 itself. The importance of studying the flow of steam arises from the fact that steam turbines are still largely used today for power generation. Much of the power generation today uh, electricity uh, generation uh, is done using uh, coal or nuclear power. So, steam turbines are used. Okay. The heat is used to uh, convert water to steam and the steam then uh, spins the turbine. So, steam turbines are very extensively used. So, knowledge of uh, flow of steam through uh, uh, such passages is important because it occurs in the turbo machinery blade passages in a steam turbine and also the, in the nozzles that precede these uh, blades. So, the theory that we have developed so far especially the physical aspects of the theory are very general. Okay. Um, uh, theory, uh, theory accompanying uh, choking of a nozzle, area Mach number relationship, I am sorry, uh, area velocity relationship and then um, choking in a nozzle and mass flow rate, not the expression, but physics relating to mass flow rate uh, of a choked uh, flow in a nozzle all carry over to steam and refrigerant when required. However, the expressions have to be uh, uh, looked at again because we had invoked the calorically perfect assumption a few times. Okay. So, wherever possible we will modify this, but as I said before we would not be looking at aerodynamic shocks in steam. Okay. Now, the calorically perfect model you may recall used um, uh, two uh, important assumptions that the gas obeys the ideal gas equation of state P V equal to R T and the internal energy is a linear function of temperature. In fact, this itself is a cascade of two approximations. So, basically we said internal energy U which is normally a function of temperature pressure is approximated to be a function of temperature alone which is further approximated to be a linear function of uh, temperature or rather C V times T. Now, let us examine uh, each of these assumptions uh, in turn for steam. So, this um, uh, figure was shown earlier um, in the module on psychrometry and it was in fact it was discussed in detail in the previous course uh, um, in the module on pure substances and properties of pure substances. It is a qualitative uh, sketch where the uh, gray area illustrates uh, regions where um, uh, steam behaves almost as an ideal gas or obeys the ideal gas equation of state to within 10 percent. Now, one of the problems uh, that we encounter when a steam expands through a nozzle is that there is no guarantee that the initial state will lie in the ideal gas uh, region. There is certainly uh, no guarantee that it will lie in the ideal gas region at the end of the expansion because at the end of the expansion the steam the state is in the uh, two phase region. Okay. So, there is some doubt that it will be or there is it is unlikely that the steam uh, the initial state of the steam will be in the ideal gas region. Now, you may wonder uh, how using the same figure we uh, made the statement in psychrometry that we may essentially take uh, the water vapor in the atmosphere to be an ideal gas which obeyed P V equal to uh, or which obeys P V equal to R T. Now, remember uh, we said that we added one important uh, uh, suffix to that statement for the range of temperatures encountered in psychrometric application. Remember psychrometric application the pressure is more or less one atmosphere and the range of temperatures also was given. Right. So, for that range of temperatures we may essentially assume uh, the water vapor in the air to be which is superheated to be uh, to obey ideal gas equation of state. Whereas, for the sort of uh, <coughs> uh, application that we have in mind now namely expansion of steam in nozzles or in um, steam turbine blade passages. The range of conditions that we will encounter is uh, quite vast and there is uh, no guarantee that uh, steam may be uh, assumed to obey the ideal gas equation of state. 
and you know certainly uh, that the uh, specific internal energy of steam, you know from steam tables that the specific internal energy of steam is definitely a function of temperature and pressure. Okay. So, both these assumptions are invalid in the case of uh, steam at least for the range of conditions that we are looking at. Okay. So, both these are invalid for, for the uh, range of uh, pressures and temperatures that we are looking at. So, we have to abandon the calorically perfect model and move on to <coughs> doing calculations with property tables. Okay. So, there is no guarantee that state 1 will lie within the shaded region or will behave as a perfect gas. State 2 certainly will not lie in that region because the, uh, the state at the end of the expansion is almost always in the two phase region. And again uh, the specific internal energy is a function of uh, T comma P. So, even the thermally perfect assumption is not valid. Okay. Forget about the calorically perfect assumption, even the thermally perfect assumption which is the first one here. So, this is thermally perfect, this is also invalid. The only assumption that we will make here is that the steam does not become too wet because if uh, the dryness fraction becomes too low, then uh, we have to uh, use th the theory of uh, gas dynamics of two phase flows because the um, water droplets or the liquid droplets have a uh, higher amount of inertia that is usually a slip between the gas phase and the liquid phase. In other words, the liquid droplets will not be able to follow the gas phase uh, quite faithfully. So, we get into some non-equilibrium effects and also two phase effects. So, we will assume that that is not the case here that the dryness fraction is sufficiently high. Now, isentropic expansion of steam, remember we when we uh, talked about quasi one dimensional flows particularly uh, flow through nozzles, we uh, said the following when, uh, when we discussed air as the uh, working substance. So, we said that the flow is isentropic throughout or in the case of a normal shock the flow is isentropic upstream of the normal shock wave and downstream of the sho normal shock wave. So, we are basically looking at isentropic expansion uh, in nozzles. Okay. In this case, with, uh, in the case of steam without any uh, normal shock. So, that is our focus here isentropic expansion of steam. Now, isentropic expansion of steam may be written as PV raised to n equal to constant uh, following uh, PV raised to gamma equal to constant for a calorically perfect gas. Okay. Uh, now, the value of n itself has to be determined from uh, experimental data and this was done uh, long back and it was shown by calendar that if uh, the steam is superheated then it essentially uh, obeys PV raised to 1.3 equal to constant and uh, if it is a saturated mixture at the beginning of expansion then uh, the index n may be calculated using this expression. So, the speed of sound or acoustic wave propagation speed may be evaluated in closed form in this case as square root of n times p times v. What is that for uh, in case of air this would have come out to be uh, square root of gamma times r times t and we know that uh, air obeys the ideal gas equation of state p v equal to r t. Okay. So, the expressions are the same except for the fact that gamma is replaced by n in this case, but not always you have to be very, very careful when you do the calculations. Okay. So, uh, the momentum equation remains the same and it may be rewritten like this V dV equal to minus V times dP. The left hand side may be integrated because it is a perfect integral and that gives us V2 square minus V1 square over 2. The right hand side also may be integrated now since uh, we know the relationship between uh, P and the specific volume. So, PV raised to N uh, equal to constant. So, the right hand side may be integrated between states 1 and 2 to yield an expression like this or we may write V2 equal to this expression. So, basically what this says is uh, <coughs> starting uh, at <coughs> state 1 where uh, P1, V1 and the velocity V1 are known, 
we may then go to state 2 and P2, V2 and other quantities or uh, known may be evaluated. <coughs> now, the energy equation uh, looks like this, same as before, this may be integrated to give the following. Notice that we are not replacing H with Cp times T. Generally, um, in the case of steam nozzles, uh, without any loss of generality, we may assume that the steam actually expands from, uh, from a reservoir where um, the stagnation conditions P0 and V0 uh, prevail and it is expanded to a final pressure of uh, P. So, we are taking steam at a, a reservoir condition of P0 and we are expanding it through a nozzle convergent or convergent divergent to a final pressure of P. If you do that, then the velocity at the end of the expansion process will be uh, given by this expression. Okay, v uh, velocity at the beginning of expansion is 0 because we are starting from stagnation condition. This is isentropic expansion of steam from stagnation pressure of P0 to a final uh, static pressure of P is given by this expression. <coughs> so, as P decreases, the velocity V obviously will increase. So, because we uh, uh, assumed that isentropic expansion of steam may be written as P V raised to n equal to constant, we are able to derive closed form expressions like this. This may also be derived uh, using the Mollier diagram or this may also be obtained using the Mollier diagram or the steam tables. Uh, I will demonstrate this in one of the worked examples that follows. So, let us say that we have, um, uh, we have a nozzle convergent or convergent divergent. Okay, so, starting from uh, stagnation condition, let us say that we are expanding it to a pressure P. Okay, so, uh, the m dot at this section may be written as A times V over V. And this itself may be replaced by using the, uh, uh, the expression for isentropic expansion of steam. So, we may write uh, m dot equal to this. Now, we already have an uh, expression for V from here uh, when the steam is expanded from stagnation state to a pressure of uh, static pressure P. So, if you substitute that, this is what we get uh, for uh, mass flow rate at this section where the pressure is P and the cross sectional area is A. Now, for a given value of a cross sectional area A, P naught and V naught, okay, as I keep um, lowering the pressure P, as I keep lowering the pressure P, the mass flow rate increases up to a point. So, for a fixed value of A, P naught and V naught, if I keep lowering P, the mass flow rate through the nozzle keeps increasing up to a point when it reaches a maximum and it does not change beyond that. Okay. Notice that we are demonstrating choking in an alternative manner here. Okay. Now, how do we evaluate that maximum mass flow rate? Okay. We can do that by differentiating this expression uh, with respect to P and then setting the derivative to 0. So, please keep in mind that we are keeping P naught constant, V naught constant and A also constant. So, P naught is constant, this is constant, A is also constant, cross sectional A is constant. We are simply changing the downstream pressure to smaller and smaller value and we want to determine that value for pressure at which the mass flow rate becomes a maximum. So, we differentiate this with respect to P and then if you set the derivative to 0, we obtain this expression which shows that for this value of pressure, when the pressure P over P naught is equal to this, the mass flow rate is a maximum. Corresponding to this P over P naught, we may evaluate the velocity to be square root of NPV. 
So, if you substitute, if you substitute this p over p naught into uh, this expression for velocity, we get after a lot of simplification, we finally get this to be square root of NPV. So, when the mass flow rate is a maximum, remember we are pulling the flow through the nozzle, we are keeping P naught constant and we are constantly lowering P which is the exit pressure. When we do that, the mass flow rate reaches a maximum when the pressure, exit pressure corresponds to this value and the exit velocity for this case is square root of NPV which we showed to be the speed of sound in steam. So, we are basically proving whatever we have already shown for a calorically perfect gas that when you uh, pull the flow through the nozzle, the uh, mass flow rate is a maximum when the exit pressure is equal to P star and the exit velocity is equal to the speed of sound that is what we have shown here. So, we may actually write P equal to P star for this case when the mass flow rate is a maximum. <coughs> Notice that the uh, analysis uh, that we have done so far is very similar to what we did before. We have extensively used uh, PV raised to n equal to constant that is what has made us uh, allowed us to derive these expressions in closed form. But notice that you know we really strictly speaking do not use a Mach number in this case. We use velocity, mass flow rate and so on, but we do not really use or uh, derive area Mach number relationships and so on. So, uh, what we will do in the next lecture is to go through a couple of examples which illustrate the concepts that I have uh, just outlined.